if S is the sum of the reciprocals of the 10 consecutive integers from 21 to 30. What is S being defined as sum of the reciprocals of the integers from 21 to 30. Which means if I take 1 over 21, reciprocal of 21, then I take 1 over 22, then I take 1 over 23, and I go on up to 1 over 30, and then I add up everything. That is what S is equal to. This is the definition which you have to clearly understand. S is the sum of the reciprocals of 10 consecutive intervals 21, 22, 23, 24. Reciprocals of that are added up to give you S. This is clear. This is the definition of S in the question. What is the question now? Then S is between which of the following two fractions? Okay, and the options are all fractions, ranges. What can you do on this question? Formula of arithmetic progression to denominators. Now, the numbers 1 over 20 or 1 over 22 is not giving us an arithmetic progression. Denominators are in AP. The fractions are not in AP. So you cannot use that logic out here. Now let's understand again what this question is testing in a way. It's another math concept which we won't cover separately but with the help of such examples whenever you come across them. Which is the thought process of maxima and minima. A lot of GMAT questions will require you to think in terms of extremes. In terms of extremes. Maximize something or minimize something. Okay. In other words, as you can see, the fractions are starting at 1 over 21. Then denominator is going up means the values are going down. We want to simplify the thing. So let's jump to one extreme. One end of the spectrum is where all the numbers are 1 over 20, let's say. Because 20 is a good denominator versus 21, so we can approximate to that. In other words, if I had something like this given to me, okay, then this total is very easy to compute. Because 1 over 20, 10 times means 10 over 20, which is half. So this is giving me the value half. I need to interpret what this half is. Which end of the range is it? What have I done to the denominators? I have reduced all of them. In reality, I had a 1 over 22, but I took only 20. I had 1 over 29, but I took only 20. Which means my real fraction, the actual fraction was smaller. I made it slightly larger, yeah. which means the total which I got is higher than what I should get with the actual numbers. Also, if this is the total I get with 1 over 20, then my actual numbers cannot give me a total beyond this. That also I know. Which means this is the highest possible total with these kinds of fractions. So this thought process has given me the upper end, which happens to be half. Of course, given the options out here, only A remains. But let's say there was another option with half as the upper limit or something similar. Then we would have applied the same thought process at the other extreme, which is to make all of them as 1 over 30. which is giving us one third. What have we done here to denominators? We have increased all of them. Instead of 21, we have taken 30. Instead of 22, we have taken 30. As you increase the denominator, the value falls, which means we have actually reduced all the numbers slightly. And yet, and that is giving us one over three, which means the actual total has to definitely be higher than one over three. Because after increasing the denominators and decreasing the fractions, we got 1 over 3. Which means with our actual denominators, we will get slightly higher values. And therefore, total slightly higher than 1 over 3. 
So now this is our lower end of the thing. So even if you had combinations of options, you know that the lower side should be one third, the higher side should be one over 